Chris Popper here in Bangor. I'm joined by Mark Shields down in Bar Harbor for our weekly coaches show sponsored by Allen Insurance. And coach, congratulations. A nice victory over Spruce Mountain moving to five and one on the season. And one of the things I, I do want to compliment you on is people are wondering about, oh my gosh, hope they didn't run up the score. And the one thing that I have seen um, and I and I have said constantly is Coach Shields never runs up the score, uh, takes knees, you know, in, within the five yard line if the game's well in hand. And uh, I just want to pass that along. I, I, you know, your sportsmanship is second to none in, in uh, well, the state. Thanks for that, Chris. Yeah. Um, well, for starters, yeah, it was uh, good to get the victory over Spruce Mountain. Um, you know, we knew going into the game that they, uh, you know, I think they started the season with maybe low 20s um, and for their numbers. And then, you know, they came down with 17 kids, you know, to suit up against us. And, you know, that's tough. No doubt about it. Um, their athletic director, I went to college with him and he had called me early in the week and, you know, just said, you know, just be aware that, you know, our numbers are going to be low and we might have to start some younger kids in the game. And so we were prepared for that. Um, we had repped a lot with our twos and threes all week long, um, you know, knowing that we still had a football game to play and we still needed to get the win. And it was homecoming. It was senior night. You know, it was a, a big night for, for us as a team and a, you know, a school and a community. So proud of the kids. They came out and took care of business early on in the game. And, and then we were able to get some of our younger guys on the field. I think everybody actually stepped on the field uh, last Friday night, which is wonderful. And yeah, I was about ready to go on in the fourth quarter. So, I mean, we, we were down to the eights and nines, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think you might've been good for maybe a play or two, uh, possibly. Only if Dan Vibert were standing by. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'd have to have some ice ready to go, right. obviously. Um, yeah, I mean, as far as running up scores, uh, you know, I've been on the other end of that. And oh. it, it really does nothing to help a program. Um, you know, once the game is in hand, then there's no reason to do that. I mean, there's multiple reasons. The biggest reason is it's just disrespectful to other programs and other coaches. Um you know, plus it does nothing for the kids. It demoralizes their their kids, their players. Uh, and also, you know, I've seen teams leave their starters out there late in games and then the starter gets hurt, um, you know, which is kind of silly. So anyway, it, there's a lot of reasons not to do that. And I just don't believe in that. And, uh, you know, I I think I don't think we scored a point in the second half, which was no, was good. No. So um, who'd you award the game ball to on? from last Friday? Yeah, so we um, had some guys uh, step up for us and uh, Hadari Foster is a guy that's coming along for the program. Uh, Hadari is a guy that, you know, he played soccer early on in his high school career and decided to come out for football last year. And, and this year he's really uh, progressed. Um, I told him the other, <laughs> sorry, the other day, he's probably our most improved player um, from August 14th to now. So Hadari, um, you know, he had a big night for us. He, you know, he's he's really taking it seriously, which I'm really happy about. And um, he had some big plays for us. So Hadari Foster got the game ball. I think he led the team in tackles when you sent me the defensive stats. So which is uh, which is fantastic to see. Yeah, that's pretty impressive considering he was playing defensive line. So that's that's great. Yeah. All right, so now we've got a huge game against Morse. Um, I was looking at the Crabtree points, which is one of the most convoluted uh, ranking systems because it takes into account um, your opponent's one loss records. And um, both teams right now are at five and one. Um, and it's going to be, I mean, what we want uh, for an MDI is you want Mountain Valley, Gray New Gloucester, Camden Hills, Waterville, Lake Region, and Spruce Mountain all to win this weekend because that then improves your win-loss record. I'm, it's going to be close looking at what everything's happening. Um, 
even with a victory, you may not go two and you'd have a better record over Morse. And we've been on the, you know, there was one year when, what, we, MDI didn't go to the playoffs because, despite having a better record because of the Crabtree point system. Yeah, the Crabtree point system is an interesting uh, way, um, you know, to figure out standings. And, and I, I'm not smart enough to do the math, but, uh, you know, for us as a football team, you know, we, we don't think about those things. I mean, that will take care of itself. And, you know, all our focus is on trying to beat Morse. Um, you know, Morse is a quality football team. Like you said, they're five and one. Uh, you know, they're probably the best offensive line um, in the conference from tight end to guard to center. Um, they have some real stout kids up front and they have a big, strong quarterback behind them with some strong running backs. So they're, they're going to be a tough team. They, they want to run the ball. You know, they, they remind me of coach Shields back in 11 man football. Uh, they want to pound the rock and take time off the clock and keep the score low. And so for us, you know, we're a team that we want to spread it out and score as many touchdowns as we can offensively. So offensively, we need to have a big night to try to get them out of what they want to do. Um, you know, and then defensively, we we got to hold them, you know, because if they, you know, if it takes three downs, four downs to get a first down and then you roll the clock again, next thing you know, there's another three minutes gone. And um, that's how that team more. That's how they beat teams. They they control the ball, they control the clock, they keep the scores low, and, and they win that way. So, um, yeah, I mean, I told the kids this week that, you know, we're at the end of the season right now, and your next game is your biggest game. It's just the way it is. And and this is the biggest game of the season for us, no doubt about it. And, yeah, I mean, I'm hoping if we win, we go too. But you're right, it's not guaranteed with the Crabtree points, and so be it. That's nothing we can control. We'll just go down there and play the best football that we can. It looks like they're averaging uh, only allowing about 12 points a game. I mean, the, the opening game of the season, uh, they lost to Camden Hills six nothing. And six nothing is a, is an unheard of score in eight man football. Yeah, it really is. Um, so you're right, and you know, like when I ran the T offense. Sometimes your best defense is your offense because right. if your offense is on the field and you're grinding, running the ball, taking time off the clock, then the other offense isn't out there. And sometimes what happens is when the other offense actually gets the ball, they kind of panic. They feel like they got to score quickly um, to catch up and, and you might turn the ball over, what have you. So, yeah, they're they're good on both sides of the ball. Their special teams are solid. They're very well coached. Um, it's going to be their senior night. They're going to be all jacked up to beat the Trojans. So, you know, we're going to be going into a hornet's nest again. But, uh, you know, I, I love it. I think it's a great atmosphere for us. It's a it's a playoff type atmosphere, even though it's a regular season game. So I think this is perfect for us. Uh, what are injuries like? I mean, now we're into week uh, week seven of the season. And it obviously, you know, everything's taken a toll since we started back uh well, it's hard to believe it's it's just been two months ago, back in middle of August. Right. So besides the ooey and owies that we talk about that football players have to contend with, um, we're a healthy football team. Um, you know, we'll have a full roster going down there and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll give them everything we have. And I know you're leaving early, um, <clears throat> you know, about one one thirty on Friday to to head down there because it's. I think it's two and a half hours from or two and three quarter hours from MDI. It's a, it's a long bus trip. I mean, everything is, is you know, I mean, when people from Prescott are looking at this and going two and a half hours. Come on. That's just a, you know, we get on the bus, we get off the bus. But I mean, that's a, it's a longer bus ride. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. The kids are getting excused at one thirty. Uh, we're going to be on the road by one forty five. Like you said, Probably with traffic this time of year, it could take us up to three hours to get down there. So it'll be a quick turn turnaround to get off the bus and get the guys ready. But I'm hoping we can get off the bus and maybe they can stretch their legs, walk around on the field a little bit. We'll see. But, you know, we're used to that now with eight-man football. That's just the way it is. I mean, we went all the way down the lake region here a couple of weekends ago, and the guys responded just fine to that. And what it is, what it is, you know, it's just 
part of, uh, you know, eight man football and, and we'll make the most of it. So, <clears throat> excuse me, nothing's guaranteed, but um, the chances are there will be at least one more game at alumni field um, either next week or the week after. And it'd be great. I mean, the, the crowd on last Friday uh, for homecoming and senior recognition was, was just electric. I mean, it was it was so nice to see such a, a, a loud crowd and, and and the stands were full. Yeah, it was awesome. I I mean, we've had some great crowds over the years, and I will say, I mean, this is one of the better years. You and I have been doing this a long time, and um, we just have a great group of students right now that have, you know, amazing school spirit, and it's showing up at, at all the games, you know, no matter what the sport is. And so, yeah, that, I mean, the crowd last Friday night against Bruce Mountain was another great one, and, and I love the part, you know, they have different themes each night. I mean, they really put some thought into this stuff. So, uh, you know, of course, you got Jay Haney leading the, the pack. You know, he's 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 the guy. So uh, it's it's been amazing. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, you'd like to hope that this continues throughout the season um, or throughout the school year. I don't know if it's this class that's, you know, um, remembers what things were like when COVID was here and they couldn't attend everything. So now they want to suck every last morsel that they can, um, especially the seniors in, in their senior year. Yeah, and that, that could be a big part of it, Chris. I, I mean, Jay Haney's a senior, my son Jacob's a senior, and I remember their freshman year, they were coming to school. I believe they were coming to school half days. They were doing half yeah. day at school, half day at home. They were all wearing masks. They did that for a couple of years. So I think, you know, they're just excited. <laughs> Right to be part of you know that atmosphere, and they're making the most of it for sure. Yeah, it's just amazing. All right, well, we'll have the game on the radio uh, starting at 5:40 on uh, Friday night. So we got the game on the radio. You can hear it anywhere around the world on the WDE Internet uh, radio station, and uh, also on our free downloadable app and on any Alexa-enabled device. Coach, best of luck. Um, We'll talk to you next week, and uh, let's bring home a, a, a victory from Bath. Absolutely. Thanks, Chris.